Hi, this is Chuck with Nerd3D. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to set up a new dependency using Poser's Dependency Editor. Let's say we have a case where we want to create a totally new dependency. Now, on Roxy here, on her bikini, there has little ties on the side here. And if you move the leg to the side, you'll notice that the tie gets pushed into the leg. Well, it, it so happens that the ties actually have controls on them so that you can move them. If you select the bikini bottom, there's a right bow body part, and we can move that side to side, and that would take care of it pushing through the leg. Wouldn't it be nice if that could be automatic? Well, actually, it can be. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to use the dependency editor to set this up, and you need to stop and think about it for a second how it's going to work. You need to pick the dial that's going to control everything, and that's going to be your master dial. And in this case, it's going to be the side-to-side -side dial for Roxy's right thigh. So I'm going to go ahead and set that back to zero because that's going to be our starting point. And I'm going to click the little triangle on the side here and go to Edit Dependencies. Now, it so happens this already has a JCM associated with it, and you can see that in the list. And we're simply going to add another dependency to control the little bow here. So to add a new dependency, I click Start Teaching, and then I go to the bikini bottom, and I go to the body part that I want, which is going to be the right-hand bow, and I'm going to set I need to set a zero point. I need to set where this bow is going to start when the dial is zeroed. So I have my my side to side dial set to zero. I'm going to set this dial to zero also. And you can see when I did that, it added the bow to the list of dependencies for the side to side leg dial. Now I'm going to move the leg out to the side a little bit here, and I'm going to set another control point for this. So I've moved the leg to minus 84. And now I'm going to I'm going to set the dial for the bow, which is still over here, to whatever looks good here. We'll say minus 80. And now I can test this by moving it back to back back and forth. So as you can see this kind of gets updated in real time. Now you see I I didn't set it far enough. I didn't go all the way to 90, and that's okay because we can add another control point. So when I have the legs set all the way to 90, I just adjust the bow a little bit more, and it adds another control point for the side-to-side -side control of the right bow. And if I select it, you can see it's actually created a, her a curve here in the graph of the keyed dependency. Now let's move all the way through the range of motion and see if it, if it looks good all the way through the range of motion. And you can see right here at about 30 degrees, it's actually penetrating a little bit. And I can control this in a couple of different places. I can use the dial here to move this side to side. Or I can actually go down here in the graph display and I can move the little indicator here. And I could set it to the point where it's penetrating and there's actually two ways to adjust this here. I can use the dial for the side to side up here, or I can actually go right on the graph right here and click and drag that right on the graph display and adjust it from there. This gives you a great deal of control in creating your dependencies. So that's it. All you have to do now is click stop and the the dependency is fully recorded, and if you save the figure, it will always be there. And you'll notice that I saved this between two figures. The bikini is a conforming item. It's conformed to Roxy. If you save it to the library while it's still conformed, the next time you load it as a conforming clothing item on Roxy, all the dependencies will still work. You can also use this graph display in the bottom of the dependency editor to delete keys. So let's say I set a key over here like this, and I decide that I don't like it. I could use these buttons here to choose the previous and next keys in the, in the display. You can see how it moves the little display there. And let's say this is the key I don't want. When it's on that key, all I have to do is press the delete button, and it will remove the key. You can remove the entire dependency so that the there's no longer a relationship between the two dials by selecting it in the list up here and collecting the Remove Selected button.
Now I also mentioned that there's two different kinds of dependencies. There is a delta add delta dependency. And I'm going to use Roxy again for an example on this. Now full body morphs are almost always set up as a delta add type dependency. So what I've done is I've created a full body morph for Roxy to demonstrate this. I've created the morph called breast full and I'm going to go ahead and dial that to one. And as you can see the bikini is not automatically following it. Now I've created the morph in the bikini as well, but I accidentally on purpose named it a different name. Now if I had named it exactly the same name as it was in Roxy, the bikini top would automatically follow. But I wanted to show you how to set this up if for some reason you need to have morphs with different names. So just like with the, the other dependency, we want to go to the morph that's going to be controlling everything. So that's going to be in the body of Roxy, and it's going to be the breast full morph. And we'll click the little bullseye here, or the little triangle to pick up Edit Dependencies. And you can see it's got the list of the, of the morphs that are already being controlled by this dial and that's the, the full body morphs that are on Roxy. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a dependency to this dial. And you'll notice the bottom half doesn't have the graph, it just has a single number, and that is the delta add ratio, or the delta add delta, and it's the control ratio between the master dial and the slave dial. And with full body morphs, this is practically always just a one. So I'm gonna click Start Teaching, and I'm gonna go to the bikini top in the body and all I have to do is set this dial to 1 and as you can see it created the dependency right here and the delta has been set to 1 and now when I dial the body morph on Roxy the bikini top is going to follow. Click stop and you're done. That's all you have to do to set up a delta add delta dependency. There's only one control point so you don't have to worry about setting the zero. And just like the other dependencies You'll notice this was a conformed figure, and if I save this to the library while it is conformed, the next time I load it back as a conforming figure, the dependencies are going to continue to work. Now you should be able to set up your own dependencies in Poser. Thanks for watching and have fun using the dependency editor in Poser.